Good afternoon. Uh, it's great to be here. It's the first time I've read in, in Manchester, a wonderful city. I'm going to be reading in English, you'll be glad to hear, but I might read um, a few extracts in Welsh so that you can just hear, just savour the language. Um, I'm a very proud bilingual. I cherish the Eng English language, but Welsh is, is my mother tongue, my language. Um, I'm going to start with a poem that I read very often when I travel the world. Wherever I go, I read this poem because it's about translation. And it started, uh, my, uh, one of my translators, Aldous Thomas, once said to me, a poem in translation is like kissing through a handkerchief. And my reply to him was that it's better than not kissing at all. And so I wrote this poem because um, it's about language, it's about trying to translate. It's also about the Welsh being a timid lot, a timid nation, a very puritanical nation in, in one way. And um, it's about caressing languages. When I uh, caressed, when I gave a friend a hug one day, he said, you've been to London again, as if it's only in London that they do hugging. So um, that's the kind of place I come from. So this is called Kisan Hankes. I read the English first so that you have the sense, and then I'll read the Welsh. A caress in the dark. What a tame lot we were with our secretive yesterday's kisses. Today, it's a common greeting. And we watch on the small screen world leaders deal peace with a cold embrace or an adder's kiss. The lyric translated is like kissing through a hanky, said the bard. As for me, I hug those poems between pages that bring back the word lovers. Let the poem carry a handkerchief and leave on my lip its veiled kiss. Anwes in a gwyll. To Bobol Loweth oi them, and Quator Gisan doi, and Hedu for the week of Varch. I got a screen Varch, Gwelun at Wainweir Bead, and Travod, Hill your hair, the Ganwes Lars, and Bellin Bubach. Ardelenego i Throssini do on Kisan Drui Gadach Pocket, Methain Prevard. Minai, Cinema Vred Ker, Dardalin, Ganduini Gol, Gariaton Gere, Amanav Hin, Avo Gerd, Bit Hankes, a Carvan Wevis. Sus dan len. I suppose it's the first time Welsh has been <laughs> read, well, uh, somebody's read from here um, for a very long time. Who knows? It might have happened before. Um, kiss is sus in Welsh. So if you remember anything after today, the word sus is a very good one to know. Um, I was asked to read the next poem. I'm going to read from a new collection. It's still in manuscript form. Uh, it comes out from Blood Ducks in September. It's called Murmur. That works well in Welsh and in English. Mirmir in Welsh and Murmur in English. Um, also in French, so it's quite an universal word. And I was asked to read this. Don't get many requests as poets, but I was asked to read this by uh, another fellow poet in the audience, uh, Pat Bellotti. And I wrote this about six months ago when I had to babysit in a very unusual place. Uh, my daughter wanted, had just given birth uh, to her daughter and had to go to a funeral, had to go to the crematorium. And the only way she could do that was that I tagged along, sitting in the back seat of the car, looking after the baby. So this poem is called Babysitting in the Crematorium. And as I was sitting in the back seat, all I could see in front of me were hillocks of moles, mole hills. And on reading, one realized, of course, that moles can recycle their breath, they can live uh, live on, as it were. So this is a poem that is a bit of a parable, perhaps. Babysitting in the crematorium. In Welsh, it's carco and a creme. Such a strange place to be, little one. A parked car on a Friday afternoon in January, 
you and I, claiming this hour for ourselves. We have a world full of fancies between our fingers. Each a rattle, shake, a shock, to the sound brings a smile. And beyond us is grief's isle, a grave company, witness to the loved one resting in peace. Unlike us, then, we are unwounded, but bound together with a sling near an endless earth bank. See how easily the moles do it, sweet hillocks hill forth the earth, parties in soil, in sheer delight of their hidden lives. These recyclers of air delving deeper and deeper, digging on down to the bottom of things, drawing out each life, rebreathing each breath. Humanity does not have this gift. Beauty for ashes is what brings us to this hot spot. We were born for the smoke. But for now, my little one, sleep gently. How eternal each second when minding a child. And our lives from now on, quake grass, lightning. I read a more jolly poem, perhaps. Um, and this is a poem that I wrote when I was out in the States. I read this wonderful story. This is a found poem, really. Um, I read this story about an, a woman who was caught speeding. Nothing, nothing spectacular about that until I read the story, 93-year-old Ada Burke from Victorville was caught speeding. And the speed cop couldn't catch her up. But when he did, she turned to him and said, what's the problem, honey? And he said, you're going to get into trouble calling everybody honey. Anyway, she goes to a court where she calls the judge honey. And he gave her, she said she couldn't pay a fine that the bird, she called the car the bird, only flies on the third of the month when she had her social security. And so he was fairly lenient with her. He made her do community service for Meals on Wheels. So if you can imagine this 93-year-old pushing wheels, slower wheels, to people probably younger than her. So I called this Cat Out of Hell. Cath i Gathrel. I read just four lines in Welsh. Veganoid i ganrif llyroedd poill yn gwylsyn ger cannwyll. Cynfyd llyroedd cerdded i oli arydr yn syth weled. She was born to a quill by candlelight in the century of discretion. The old world where walking behind a scythe was intuition. Then came the singing machine. Some took to it like birds to the sky, said Ada when they flagged her down. What use are wings but to fly? Ada Burke, you'll hit big trouble, said the speed cop through the window, calling everybody honey and you a widow. Well, honey boy, I've nobody left to call me darling anymore. And where's the sense on a winding lane dawdling at 60? It's hedgehog law. Only once a month I can pay for my wheels, never mind getting speedy. Now she's stuck in a rut, steering meals on wheels to the old and needy. Sentence for speeding. Fast Ada does community service. No wage. On wheels that loiter wherever they go to pay for not acting her age. That's how we all would like to be in our 90s, I'm sure. I'll finish um, with a poem that I wrote after being out in Cairo um, a few years ago. Um, Cairo is now a very different place, but and, um, so when I read this, I'm very aware of some of the friends I have out there who are uh, trying to change the situation there. Um, and so this poem I wrote for Maha El Said, um, who told me this wonderful story about 
a friend's mother who would wash her money every day and put them out on a clothesline. And with the financial situation, we might all be washing money before long. Um, so this, again, is a little parable I think about. Um, I never thought I'd write a poem about money, but I suppose it's quite fitting. So I'll finish with this, and it's called Filthy Lucker for Maha El Said. A man has no need to rub his hands together for others to know his wealth is unsurpassed. And although money begets money, riches have wings. On the outskirts of Cairo, an old woman washes her notes each morning, then hangs the wet papers out to dry. There they will whisper and sway on the wind. Next morning, go out into the world purified. If you want your money clean these days, you must scour it yourself. Um, the first poem I'm going to read, I'm going to read three or four poems, is called Mules. And I wrote it after I was rushing around a whole year, traveling too much. And the doctor told me to slow down, and so I went out and I bought a pair of slippers. And mules, uh, orange-colored mules, uh, but they became a metaphor for something else. They're not really about slippers at all, I don't think. Um, so this is Mulsot in Welsh, mules. And I'll read two lines in Welsh and two lines to finish in Welsh. Fe gwelais drwydir yn glaf am danaf droed a llaw i gwadnau o rwber yn nadu y gallwn pestyminwn ag o'r grwn esmoth. I saw them through glass, longing for me, heart and soul, their tongues of rubber calling that I could, if I so wished, open a smooth furrow along a lane filled with peace and silence. They lolled around the easiness of mapping out a small rest, an hour full of contentment, laptops at their mistress' feet, awaiting caresses, ambivalent toes at end of day. These slippers have no backs, they understand my need to come and go, to stride out and home in shadow. Understand the virtues of soothing homes whose inhabitants draw back a little, ambling along the faithful who stand their ground and mutely keep a foothold. The true use comes at times like these, singing about a world beyond you could really plant both feet there, They'll be here at the foot of the bed, ever-present guardians, despite these feet of clay they're blessed with. And in this world, where hard souls are slapping concrete, clinking, clanking heels, stuttering their status, cutting across the quiet congregation, the world needs these meek ones to whisper to the earth how low we are, like mules, Blessed are the humble slippers who sometimes at least inherit the earth. When I be the lapray or the panai, I eti vedant a dayar, or laya weithiai. The next poem I'm going to read is by a very well known Welsh language poet uh, who died in the 70s. Um, and I feel as a poet, reading my poetry in different places, that I owe it. We are only poets um, because of other poets. Desmond Tutu once said that we're only human beings through other human beings. And the same is true also of poets. And I think it's good to try and create a little frisson about uh, poets who, whose work is of world uh, status, world, world standing. And this poet was called Waldo Williams. He was a pacifist. He went to prison on a number of times for refusing to pay income tax because of the war in Korea. Um, and this is a, a poem that's a question as well. It asks questions. So 
Beth yw byw, To Live. And I've translated three poems for the new book and have been egged on to, to complete his whole... Um, he only brought out one book through his, during his lifetime, uh, but it is a classic. To Live. What is living? Owning a great hall within a cell. And what is knowing? The root which trusts the branches well. What is it to believe? Giving solace until deliverance arrives. And to forgive? On foes through thorns to the enemy's side. What is it to sing? Catching breath from the gift of creation. What's work but humming a song from trees and wheat's collection? What are affairs of state, a craft that's still just crawling, and armaments, a knife wrapped in a baby's fist for thrusting? Being a nation, what can it be? A gift, the heart's well of blessedness, loving a country, keeping house in a cloud of witnesses, Watch the world to the all-powerful, a circle spinning, and to the children of the earth, a cradle rocking. Agi blant ar, creed, and sigla. I leave it on that, uh, but he is a remarkable po poet and a pacifist, as I said, a Quaker as well. I read. Two more uh, poems, just quick poems. Um, Brooch. This was on the tube, uh, on the underground, in 2009. And the first I knew of it was receiving all these emails from people who had seen it. Um, I didn't even know it was up uh, on, on, the, on the tube. Um, and I think no poet can want more than that, to have strangers to want to get in touch with you uh, about a poem that has moved them. And it is a, a, a poem that has moved many people because it's written to a person who died at a very young age of 34 uh, from cancer. And I was asked to write a tribute poem. Um, and I'm reading this this afternoon thinking of another poet uh, who died a few days ago, Anne Atkinson. Um, so, in fact, I think I'll finish with this poem, and I'll read the Welsh and the English, and I'll intersperse them um, so that you're caught and aware. I'll move from Welsh to English. Broich, broch. Y mae lle i allanolion, clystlysau am berfwglis, berichlydau o feini bychain. They have their place accessories, Earrings, the odd necklace, gemstone bracelets. A geto or meddal fewn olion y gweithiwn ffroed trwy fywyd yn dlws atgo ar oedd ein dyddiau. And yet, it's from the soft inner depth we work the brooch of our lives. That jewelled keepsake set to outlast us. Roedd y ffroed di'n un llachar, anger ddar weilod y bachin, cadwen fach rhag i cholli, Yours, it was a brooch ablaze, the passion crafted clasp, the light chain to keep it safe. Heddiw, eraill fydd yn ei gwisgo, y tlws a greoed o fynwes ei raid, gan ddall y gaid yr hael and dalli. Others now will wear your brooch, this jewel fashioned from a golden heart. It will catch the sun, it will dazzle us. Diolch. <laughs>